Another round coming in. Turk shelling. See anybody? So I, I just watched it land right there's, there's there behind There's a vehicle up there. There's a vehicle up there. there's one right here. Yeah. Do you have a tourniquet on? No. But he is alive. All right, this is 16 October 2020. We're in Anissa Hospital. Place has been under attack since the Turkish-led invasion 2019, October, November. And there's intermittent shelling. Today, the Turks forces, there's Turk advisors, you can see their position about a thousand meters from the front. But, so we don't know if they fired the rounds or the Free Shirin Army, but anyways, they're working together. And it looked like 120 millimeter mortars hit. First there was three, we went out, as we went out to see if anyone was hurt, another one landed, and then it came in closer about two, 300 yards from us. Close enough for some of the shrapnel to hit our vehicle, but we had no casualties. So we waited a while and nothing more happened as we started to drive back into the town, back to the hospital, because we're trying to go to Kobani today. There was another round landed to our left and I was in the, my armored vehicle, I couldn't really hear it. But I saw the expression of the soldiers duck and I thought, well, something happened. So I turned our vehicles around again. I could see the dust. I looked at my binos. The ground dipped. All I could see was just dust. I thought, well, they just hit an empty field. But it turned out there was a group of sheep down on the dip. And this is about 800 yards away from us. And there was a little boy and two men. And both men were lightly injured, but the boy had his one foot blown off and then severe injury on the other leg. And um, he had injuries all over his uh, pelvis and brought him in here, and we started working on him. Stabilized him as much as he could on his wounds, and then evacuated him now to the hospital in Iraqa, which is about an hour and a half away. And we pray he lives. His name is Haram. We pray he lives in Jesus' name. I mean, Our team stabilized him, and working with the local doctors, we're able to keep him alive, and his airway was good. He was breathing well, his pulse came up. We had fluids in him, we had oxygen on him had the bleeding stopped, put him in an ambulance to take him to Raqqa to a bigger hospital, and he died somewhere between the ambulance ride and Raqqa itself. And we are very sad about that. The mother was wailing and crying. We thought, I'd hoped and prayed he would live, but he didn't. And that's just the latest. Over 10 kids have been killed recently by the same Turkish strikes, and these need to stop. Not only need to stop, that this kid himself had been displaced earlier. And just like these kids here, if you look at them, these are all kids from Kobani. This place was leveled and attacked and then shelled again under great threat right now from Turkey. Turkey has claimed this area of Kobani. And so we appeal to God and to the United States and to all countries, to France and every country who cares, stand for these people and tell the Turkish government, we are your friends and good friends will not allow you to attack our other friends. This world is big enough for all of us. And so thank you for praying for these kids. We don't want them to die like that kid today. And I pray for the mom and dad and family of that boy. And Lord, give them comfort and a vision of him in heaven, please. In Jesus' name, I mean.